This beautiful caterpillar is the larval form of a tussex moth, a nondescript group of moths that are very common. After emerging from the egg, the caterpillar sent out a single strand of silk that the wind grabbed onto and carried him for who knows how long until he landed on the flower head of this daisy. He is now doing his job. Caterpillars eat and eat and eat, and he is engorging himself on the petals of the daisy flower head. In a few short days, he will spin his own cocoon, and then shortly after that, emerge as an adult tussock moth. Fly around, find a mate, and if this one is a female, she will lay eggs and the process to start all over again. These frothy globs that you see on plants throughout the summer is actually urine excreted from the abdomen of a group of insects called frog hoppers. You typically hear them referred to as spittle bugs. What is going on here is the nymph of the frog hopper is sucking sap from the plant and then excreting a urine and adding air to it, which creates the bubbly effect. The insect then lives inside of this mass, which protects him from birds, and he can breathe off the oxygen that's in the bubbles. Eventually, he will emerge as an adult and hop away. As you look at this compass plant leaf and a prairie dock leaf, these are two common plants in the fields and prairies in our area. To keep from being eaten by rabbits and other herbivores, Notice the texture of the plant is almost like sandpaper. This consists of bumps and hairs that make these plant leaves unpalatable to herbivores. And the other school of thought is the bumps and hairs grab on to the morning dew or evening rains and hang on to it till the sun gets high, which helps cool the plant in the open fields that it lives in. At first glance, you may think this is a wild geranium because of its leaves, but it is actually a Canada anemone, the largest anemone species that we have in the forest preserves. It has five petaled flowers, and it typically grows in dark, shady areas. It can do quite well in habitats like that. It is a native perennial here in our area, and it's found throughout much of the United States in addition. On this cup plant, notice the deeply serrated leaf edge and the square stem. In late summer, a collection of six to 10 yellow flower heads will appear. The plant gets its name from the way the leaves wrap around the stem, which collects water, possibly to cool the plant in the open fields and prairies that it lives in. Another theory is that having the leaves encompassing the plant stem creates a barrier or an obstacle for pollen-hungry beetles and other insects trying to climb the plant to get to the plant's flowers to feed on. On this prairie dock leaf is a baby katydid cleaning his antenna. There are approximately 250 known species of katydids in the United States. Here he is in his nymph stage or wingless stage. Over the course of the next few weeks, he will grow and molt into an adult. If he is a male, he will call for a female by rubbing his wings together. And this creates a sound. The process is called stridulation. Katydids are the smallest ears of any animal on earth, and they are located on the knees of the two front legs. This is the non-native oxide daisy plant, a member of the group of plants called composites. Look closely at the flower head, and you will see in yellow, arranged nicely inside, are little tiny flowers actually called florets. What composites do is pack those all together, create a nice landing pad, for a pollinator, attract them with the bright petals, which are just basically colored leaves, and then each one of those little florets will get pollinated and then form a seed and drift away more than likely come fall. The proper name for this animal is the Harvestman arachnid. It is technically not a spider, but it is in the same group. Like a spider, it has eight legs, but notice it only has one body part. There are 6,600 species of these in the United States, and they eat just about anything. They do not bite people, and they are not venomous. Note the second pair of legs. They house much of the sensory organs. The legs contain thousands of nerves inside small slits that are located on the legs. Because they only have two eyes, they don't have eight, like spiders do. This four-inch parasitic horsehair worm recently emerged from the gut system of a large beetle. 
I started off life as a cyst and then was ingested by the beetle, or as the summer progresses, large grasshoppers and katydids and praying mantises do the same thing. The animal then lived in the gut system of the insect, and when the insect passed by some water, amazingly it emerged to start off life again, hopefully find a mate. 